Hi everyone, it's my first video of 2022 and today I'm going to show you how to go from this bad, bad lighting to this cinematic, beautiful, stunning, clean footage that you can get with your phone and I'm going to show you technically how to do this as well as with the lighting. So the first thing we're going to look at when it comes to low light filmmaking with your smartphone are the settings that you'll be using for making a film. Now I'm using Filmic Pro here of course, so if you go to the white balance first, I want to double check that that's all correct. So we're going to tap on these colours on the bottom left because it's very easy to get a white balance that isn't properly balanced at night time. So we're just going to tap AWB until it's auto white balance, put the white sheet there. So you want something that's non-reflective so you get the most accurate reading and that looks good to me. And now we can look, if we tap off that, at our frames per second, shutter speeds and ISO. So on the bottom here next to the timecode medallion, you've got 25 FPS. That's 25 frames per second, which we've matched on the left hand side with a 1 over 50 shutter speed. So you always want to double your frames per second in your shutter speed to get that film look and make it look professional. Tap that so it's red. And now we've got to look at the ISO. Now ISO is so important in all filmmaking, but in low light filmmaking, especially with a smartphone, if you try and raise it like this too much, then you're going to get a lot of noise in your image and it's going to look really rough and terrible. As you can see, it's at 780 on the top left here. We want to bring it down to its base level, so its lowest level possible, which is going to make it very dark. So if we bring this right down to what's 33 is the base level on my phone, it might be slightly different for yours. You can see it's way too dark at the moment, but as we add lights and take away lights, this is gonna look a whole lot better. Now the first thing we're gonna look at is a key light with the lighting. So a key light is essentially something that lights up one side of your face right here. So it's usually the opposite side to the camera. So we're gonna turn this lamp on, which I have next to me, which you'll see in just a moment. All of a sudden you can see me and it already is starting to take a little bit of shape. So as you can see with the light as it is, it's not really lighting me particularly well, but it is lighting me. So if I move this around, you can see, if I look at my Filmic remote here, it changes not only the light on my face, but the light in the room. If I turn it that way, you can see it lights up the back of the room really nicely, but it's not natural to where I would have it normally. So I need to keep it at that level just bring it in slightly so it looks like it's where it would be in real life and to kind of accentuate that feel light because it's not enough we're going to use motivated light now motivated light is essentially lights that you're enhancing a practical light with or a light that would be there in the real world so with that i've attached a mini led light which we're going to turn on which is the same color temperature i've set to as the lamp this is a v gym light all links to what i'm using all the accessories everything i'll put in the description below if you want to check them out so what I'm going to do now is move this onto my Oxbus tripod in a position that looks natural for the light. And we're happy with that where it's shining on the face and causing some shadows on this side so we get a bit more contrast. And we've added our extra light there for motivated light to enhance that lighting. We're now going to look at the fill light. So this really depends on how much fill you want, whether you want to make it a bit of a flatter image so it's more light on this side, or whether you want something more contrasty like I'm going for, where you want a bit more shadow on the camera side of your face or your character's face. So to do that, I'm using a five-in-one reflector. Bada bing, bada boom. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is do I want to have maybe a bit lighter on that side of the face? So at the moment, if I look at my face here, I can see quite nice, almost Rembrandt lighting where I've got the triangle of light here on the opposite cheek to the light on the camera side. But if I move the reflector and put it up just out of shot, I'm getting a little bit more fill on this side now which is quite nice. So it might be the amount of contrast that I want. If I want more contrast, to stop the light from reflecting onto the walls opposite me and all that kind of thing, use the negative fill. So negative fill is when you're taking away light. So fill is bringing in light, negative fill is taking away light. So with the dark side of the 5 one reflectors, you can see here, I'm now gonna see how much darker that makes my face, which I think maybe a bit lighter. So we'll go back to the reflecting side. Then we should be able to get something quite nice. So now that we've got the key light and the fill light sorted by using a reflector, because we don't want to brighten it too much unless that's what you're going for, we're ready now to start looking at more lighting in this scene. So the next thing we're going to look at is the monitor on my laptop here to create a light on the face that represents that light you'd get from a laptop. Okay, so to represent the light from this laptop screen, I'm going to be using a Pocket Light F7 Mini light. So it's about this size, size of your hand, and I'm gonna turn that to the color temperature of 5,500. That's generally the monitor kind of color temperature that you'd get from a laptop or even TV screen. So we've got that at 30% at 5,500 Kelvin temperature, and that's gonna represent our laptop light. 
I may need to take that down a little bit, but we'll see. So if I put this on the laptop screen now. Okay, that looks really good. <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised by that. So this is the light representing the laptop screen. I've just put it at the bottom of the laptop screen here. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. No kind of tripods holding it in place, just resting against the screen here. And already this looks a lot better. E light. I've got my fill light coming from a 5 one reflector, filling in a bit of the shadows on my left side of my face, the camera side, and I've got a light now from my laptop. So now what we want to do is look at adding depth to this image, so looking at things that are behind me. But before we do, I'm going to turn the light off from the living room here, which is just above me, because I really want to see what it looks like without that. Okay, so looking at the light that I've got from the laptop, I'm really happy with the quality of the light from the laptop. It's bright enough, it feels that it's realistic, it's not too bright, it's not too dim. So what we want to do now is keep hold of that shadows on the left side of my face that we had. So now we've got this light, the light's reflecting off this 5 one reflector and reflecting that light so I've got more fill light, which is what I don't want. I want to have more contrast and more shadows on this side. So I'm now going to flip from the reflector side here and turn that into the negative fill, which is completely black. So we're going to move that here so I get more shadow reflecting onto me there. And that looks a little bit more shadowy on my left side. It's a happy medium. We've got shadows on the left, light on the right. We're good with that. Let's look at adding more depth to the image. Okay, so this is where we get really interesting as well with lighting, going in another level of professional film look lighting. I've actually got a fish tank, which if I turn that light on, it's gonna give a nice reflection because there's no roof to it. It's just a light that goes across with loads of space around it. Should create a nice pattern on the wall as well, which gives us a nice sense of depth as well. So let's turn that on and see how it looks. Oh, I love that. Yes, that looks amazing. Okay, so this is a really good example of using what you have in your home. If you've got a fish tank like this, which can create nice lighting effects on the wall, the ceiling, adding a bit of depth as well, it's really worth looking at what you have. Something else I want to do to add a bit of depth is adding something, we've got the light about a foot away from the lens here, but I want to add something a bit closer to see if I can get a plant in there. So I've got this plant here. As you can see, and we're gonna see if we can get this nice and close to the lens and add a little bit of depth. So see if I can squeeze it in behind the laptop perhaps. Just to add a little something. Yes, one time wonder, that looks beautiful. So we've got a bit of depth here with that plant nice and close to the lens. That's actually closer than this light. So you've got the plant right next to the lens there creating a sense of depth. You've got the light here it's all working really, really well. So already we've got something that looks a lot better than where we started with. So now I think the back wall is looking a little bit dark on one side. I don't know if I want that or not, so I'm gonna play around with another light and see if we can create more depth. Under, we can see if that starts to match at all. Could we do on contrast, but maybe not quite so much like that. I'm actually not too keen on what this LED RGB light is doing. So I'm gonna get a small lamp from another room. I'm gonna put that on the back shelf and then we're gonna use that to create a bit more contrast in color temperatures as well, which will give us a nice looking shot. Okay, so I put the lamp behind me. I've turned my light on behind it, but now it's the trouble of trying to hide the light and mask it behind the lamp because the lamp itself, it doesn't reach the actual plug sockets I've got. So I'm having to do a lot of problem solving here. So this is proper low budget lighting, but let's see if we can make it work. But obviously we have the box behind the lamp, which is a little bit potentially a giveaway that there is a practical light behind it or a non-practical light as it were. So let's see how we can cover that up. Let's see if we can cover it up with a girl on a train. Highly recommend, so far so good. So if I move this book in front of the box, that hides the box, that also hides part of the light. Now at this point I realised that I actually had the light sticking out the top of the lamp which was no good even with the book covering it up. So I made a few adjustments so I didn't see this horrible top of the light sticking out and this is how I did it. Okay, problem solving 101. I found an extension lead in the flat, so now I'm actually using this lamp properly so I can take the book away, take the box away, and use the LED RGB light that I was using for that as a backlight. Problem solving, guys, it's all about problem solving. Now it looks more natural, it looks more realistic. There are just a couple of things clattered behind it. So I think actually we've got a fireplace just to the side here, which you can see right here. So I'm gonna see if I can place this light right around there creating a backlight on my head and just add a little nice touch at the end to really pop this image. Yes, that's much better. So here are a couple of last minute tweaks that I made just to get that nice little bit of polish on the shot using the lighting for low light filmmaking as well. So the first thing I did is I moved that lamp behind me, which you can see oh, there. So I had that on this side, but actually I wasn't very happy with that because it was kind of a little bit blocked by me 
but also it didn't give any light to this side. And I quite like where it is now because it actually shines through the vines that are running down and it kind of spreads almost like a bit of a shooting star effect on that wall. It's not as bright as I'd like, but I think on that section, it adds a nice contrast to the cooler colors I've got going on here. So it's always nice to mix up your color temperatures. Okay, so this is behind the scenes, so you can see everything that I've been using and how I've used it. Now, first of all, we've got the camera, which was set up sort of about here, really. And you've got the background there as well with the lighting. Now I had the plant literally in front of the camera lens just here, I hope you can see that there, in between the laptop and the clamp here for the phone to go with the LED light, which I use as motivated light to enhance this light. And I had that wrapped around with an octopus tripod around the frame of the whole lamp. So that's a really nice way to use an octopus tripod if you've got one. They're very cheap as well. I'll put a link for this in the description below. They're really, really useful tools to have. I use them all the time. This is where I had the light for the laptop, which was really helpful. Again, getting that harsh light on the face. I tried it with a softbox and with the honeycomb, the honeycomb grid. It just didn't really work actually. I had filmed it remote on this phone here, my iPhone 8, whilst I was able to show you here what was happening. Then if we move to the left, this is where we've got the negative fill from the black side of the 5-in-1 reflector. A 5-in-1 reflector is so useful, guys. I really recommend you get one of these. This is easily one of the most useful things you'll get for lighting in outdoors or indoors. That on the left is where I had the light for my backlight to separate me from the background where I had the light on the side of my face and the back of my hair. This is the lamp that I use. So I actually had to plug that in in the end down here into an extension cable, which is plugged into an extension cable. And then this is where the tank obviously is. You've got the lighting creating this amazing kind of rippling shadowy effect here. Really nice actually addition for the lighting. So use what you have in your home and you can create some really nice effects. You might have more than you think in your own home. If you've got any questions about lighting, guys, do hit me up in the comments down below. I've got links for all the accessories that I've been using in the description below as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like button. I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.